<laughs> we celebrate the terror of creating something big because we know that once it's complete, we will have very little competition. We stand today. The Business Method the business with method. a shout The Business Method. The Business Method Podcast. The Business Method Podcast featuring Chris Reynolds. Entrepreneurs, systems, methods, tools, and tactics for location independence. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm your host, Chris Reynolds, and welcome to the Business Method Podcast, a podcast featuring successful entrepreneurs and high-profile people dissecting their online and location-independent business models. We dissect the different methods, tools, and tactics of high-performance online entrepreneurs and high-caliber people in a series format. On our first series, we interviewed 100 entrepreneurs in 100 days that had built businesses creating $100,000 or more annually. On our second series, we are interviewing 100 entrepreneurs that have built location-independent businesses that generate a million dollars or more in annual revenue. There's a growing movement of people building these caliber of businesses and we are getting behind the minds, the logic, and the science of what it takes to build businesses like this. On top of that, we also gather entrepreneurs at events and retreats around the world. This October, we are having our annual event in Thailand. Get shit done live. It's 10 days of high performance productivity, targeted collaboration, and rapid execution designed for entrepreneurs to get a lot of work done in a little amount of time. Some say it's like 10 months of work in 10 days. There's a magic that happens when brilliant minds come together to push one another towards productive execution. That is exactly what this retreat is about. Check out all the details at thebusinessmethod.com. That is thebusinessmethod.com. Now, let's jump in today's show. The Business Method. On the last episode, we were chatting with Kevin Rogers about how he became one of the top copywriters and how his 10 years as a stand-up comedian helped forge his success. Today, we jump back into the interview to chat more with Kevin and dive deep into the importance of incredible copy and how he breaks through different income levels as an entrepreneur. Let's jump back into the show. Entrepreneur's systems, methods, tools, and tactics. Uh, now, now you mentioned you had obviously you you've gotten over this a resistance to accepting money, and I've gone through that process too. I'm curious, and I think if people don't thoroughly examine that, like that'll keep coming up for them in their lives in different ways. Like, you know, we have this. I think it is a T. Harv Eker that talks about the the money thermometer, right? And we're, we're we're raised with a money thermometer and then we either mm -hmm. stay in that zone or we learn how to increase it or decrease it even. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm curious, like, have, have you ever taken time to kind of thoroughly examine, um, what that resistance to accepting money was for you? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question as well. And, and, and no, I haven't. And, but I'm, fully aware of it and the times that it would creep up the most would be where I was about I needed to get to that mm -hmm. next level right or I would see myself blowing opportunities I still to this day will catch myself resisting um, putting together the offer uh, people are literally saying tell me the amount I have the check open <laughs> in front of me like mm -hmm. the checkbook right and I'm like and I'm like, okay, I want to do this. And I still hesitate in those moments. And I think a true, there are certain people I know I've interviewed and known who just don't have that hesitation, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, send the check and we'll figure it out from there. I I need to know how it's going to work and, and that I'm going to provide the value before I can say that number. And um, so uh, it's a great question because I, I've thought, oh, I, I need to get to the bottom of this, right? I wonder if I could root around in here, find where that is and like fix it, you know? Like it, maybe the picture's just hanging a little <laughs> crooked, you know? And I, <laughs> oh, there it is, it's all better now. Uh, so no, I, I have not, I've, I've not uncovered it, but it is there and it, it is getting better. You, you do evolve around it, but I, I think it, it, there's still improvements to be made. Now you mentioned, um, you know, knowing exactly what you can do before you tell, give people a quote on, on your service. Uh, what are some other things? Are there any other things, Kevin, that helped you break to, through that next level? Yes. Yeah. Like just having a, a, a history of results, you know, yeah. just, just doing the work and having it go really well. Not always, obviously with copy, any marketing, no copywriter would ever 
say I got this figured out. If you come across a copywriter who swears they got it figured out and they can't lose, run, mm-hmm. run. You want a, a copywriter who asks you a ton of questions and is really audition, you know, uh, you know, auditioning you for the gig as much as you are them. That's a good sign. Um, so, but you know, the the fact that more often than not, I would get better than expected results from my clients gave me a lot of confidence that I, I, I knew what I was doing. Is is what's working in copy these days? Kevin, uh, the same thing that's been working in copy, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago? It is. The, the, there's a foundational set of principles that, if ignored, will sabotage any campaign. You, you, however, the medium has certainly sh- changed a lot. How we communicate these things. We have more choices than we used to. You know, it, it, for a long time, there in the you know, late 90s, um, you know, two thousands. It was all this was kind of douchey in the sense that there seemed to be one way to go about marketing things, and it all it kind of smelled bad, right? <laughs> and and so it, it, there was a lot of people, especially in like personal development niche, and who was like, I I don't want to be salesy, and I'm I'm just not going to write that kind of. If that's what copy is, I don't want it, right? And so I'm glad that it's evolved in so many ways. There's all kinds of different funnels you can have. And I know the way I've, I, I was one of those. I was never going to talk that way to the people I wanted to do business with. Like I said, relationships are everything to me. And I'm sure it, it quote unquote cost me a lot of money as I was getting comfortable with it. But I think if you're playing a long game, the best kind of copy is the most sincere kind of copy. Like, you know, if you like to have conversations and uh, talk to people who listen and communicate back to you, then those are the kind of conversations you should have in your copy. Like, yes, you have to get a, attention with the headline. And if you're going to try to succeed on Facebook, you know, you've only got so many milliseconds to, to make an impact and all that. But at the end of the day, like, Chris, you've got a you know, really mellow approach and you're fun to talk to and you're thoughtful and, and you, and your audience loves that about you. I'm sure. Like I hope would so. want you to, <laughs> they, yeah, I don't think they're going speed it up, Chris, you know, like they, they like your pace. They, 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 and they trust. So you've, they have gravitated towards you or recommended you to other people because they're like, you're going to like this guy's style. It's going to resonate with you. He's, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's how copy has changed. I think people, entrepreneurs understand now that I get to say it my way in the way that's genuine for me and that will attract the best people. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, you mentioned some of those foundational principles. Can you elaborate on those a little bit more? Yeah, sure. So I have a one of my uh, trainings that I, I use all the time myself uh, in Copy Chief is, uh, I call it the four by six. And the four are really critical. So this is a good example of what you're asking. There, it's, it's called the four by six because it's broken down into two parts. There's the four things and the six things. And the idea of this training is that you can get all 10 of these things uh, figured out so succinctly that they would all fit uh, on a four by six card themselves, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's a framework for any, really any sales pitch. But the four are four things that are foundational that can't be, if they're not in, included, they will cause an open loop that will prevent people from taking action because they just don't feel safe for sure about what's, what's being offered here. Uh, and so they are very simply, one is, uh, what is it? You know, like, t- can you explain to me what you're offering in a really clear and succinct way that makes me say, okay, box checked, this is something I need. Um, two, uh, who are you and why should I trust you? Again, like, so simple. We all go, oh, we know that, but I see it overlooked all the time. B- B- B2B copy, like, ruins this a lot. You know, they talk in this corporate speak, right? So becoming relatable, sharing some struggle, like, you know, explaining this is why I'm particularly uniquely qualified to help you solve this problem. Uh, Number three is 
uh, uh, why can't I live without it? Mm. Which is basically explain to me what's, you know, how this is going to be the thing that's going to help when I've tried others and they didn't work. And what is the sort of price of now knowing about this and choosing not to try it or use it? Uh, number four is, is simple, like a timeline. When can I expect results? Uh, this is pr- probably the one I see overlooked the most in copy, which is people want to know what am I getting into here? Is this a ten day thing? Is it, it you know? Um, is this a, a six month? Is this a five year plan? Like you know what? But it, give me some context for the change I will see for giving you my trust and my money, uh, and, and so that I have a real expectation of what what I can expect. Other than those principles, are there any methods or hacks that you could mention or that you've seen working um, for high converting copy? Hmm. Yeah, well, that's kind of what the six are, right? It, 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 then it becomes yeah. about things that w- w- the six are what we call the, um, the six now reasons why you should want to do okay. this right now instead of waiting. And so those are the sort of the tricks and the hacks and the, so for instance, you know, how to position the value, right? People want to know why is this a good deal compared to other options I might have. Um, so a, a simple one would be, say you're, you're selling a uh, workout, a video workout program. And you could say, you know, compared to the price of a gym membership and private training, it's, you know, one-tenth of the cost, plus you get to do it on your schedule and all these things, right? Um, uh, other things are like, you know, uh, obviously if you can create some genuine scarcity and urgency around a timeline and give a, a really good reason why there's a limited amount of things or a limited time to, to purchase. Um, bonuses uh, are really important. It's but more important than having bonuses is not giving too many bonuses. People, there's a great quote I heard that, you know, people aren't looking for libraries, they're looking for prescriptions. And if, if you can add a couple of bonuses to your offer that make people go, oh, that makes it even better, but doesn't overwhelm me, then that's how you want to do the bonuses. So things like that are really effective. Kevin, let's talk. Let's talk about Copy Chief. I, as I mentioned, I love the idea of it. I love anyway online communities and communities that are um, grown for entrepreneurs. And you do something really cool with Copy Chief is is you bring the copywriters together with the entrepreneurs in an, an online form and uh, in an online community where they can help each other out and you know give feedback on each other's copy and, and what works and what doesn't work and I think that's genius I know many times in my entrepreneurial career where I'm writing stuff and I'm like and I critique it over and over and over and my over analytical brain is just like is this right should I change this word should I go back and forth and to have somebody there I think is a, a great asset in any business Tell us, just tell us more. Where did the idea come from, actually? Yeah. It, so it came from when I was starting. There was a great place like it, a forum. It was called the Copy Copywriting Board, and it was run by a guy named uh, Michael Fortin. He's a Canadian copywriter, and uh, it was man for me. It was like the, the it was like the Wonderland, you know, <laughs> because I, I was so eager to learn all this stuff, you know, and this brand new world and here were these people who were actively doing it both copywriters and business owners and sharing hey this is the new campaign and this is what it like sharing hard numbers and like really and I was like this is incredible like I could, where else would I get this education and it was free and it was amazing and I, I got my first job from that board and I formed relationships that I still have in the business from that board and then uh, one day it, it, it closed. Uh-huh. You just woke, you woke up and it was, it was locked, padlocked. And the reason it closed is because it had become uh, nasty in there. Mm. There was some weird fighting and this sort of like, kind of almost a like trollish culture was forming. And there were just a few people in there who were always combative and these fights would break out 
almost like you see on Facebook now with these like political discussions. It, it, <laughs> it started to become like an early version of that, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it was starting to become a bummer. It, it, it was interesting because on one hand, it was fascinating. It was addictive like any soap opera, but it was also annoying because it was like, oh, what happened to the really valuable conversations and people just helping each other, right? Yeah. And so the guy who ran it, uh, Michael Fortinger woke up one day and was like, I I'm done. I don't need this. Like, I don't, I'm, I, I didn't create this so I could monitor, be a hall monitor, you know? And so that's it. And it wasn't like, hey, I might close it down. I was respected that. He just made the decision and that was it, mm -hmm. right? And so, they're like, years of value, like, nobody even had time to go grab their stuff, right? You know? It's just like, <laughs> goodbye. And, and, and so then, uh, it, it, there was this huge void for me and anybody else who was on that board of, of a place like it. There was a, a, a place called the Warrior Forum that I think still exists, but it was at it was all of the bad stuff and very little of the good stuff. And um, yeah, I don't know. It was just there was nothing like it. And so uh, when I I wrote a book, uh, which was really just a, a transcribe of a talk I gave uh, called the Sixty Second Sales Hook. And I worked with Dean Jackson to to get that book made, and I put it out there, and this thing just like took off, uh, ways I could have never predicted. The people loved this. I knew that the 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 material resonated. It's a little storytelling formula that I took from a joke formula, and it just h helps people get clarity around how to tell their story like really quickly. And so uh, the book went out, and people loved it, and they started they were using it and send, sending me their their hooks, and I'm tweaking them and helping them and it was like this whole culture started to emerge around it and so suddenly i had this great new problem chris which was all right all these people want to give me money for this thing and i it's the thing i enjoy doing the most but it's totally unscalable like i can't make sense of how to make this how i spend my days and that's when i um i i said who who could solve this like who knows how this works and i'd met james shramko a couple times and I just knew he was super smart and he was kind of a systems guy and he really understood business. And so I just randomly Facebook messaged uh, uh, James and I was like, here's this problem and you're the first person who popped in my head that I think can help me solve it. Would, would you be willing to talk to me about this? We got on the phone and he's like, you know how James is, like super just clear about everything, you mm -hmm. know, and very calmly explained your problem is that you need to go from one to one to one to many. And here's how you do that. And basically laid out what he's done with his forums and super fast business. And he's like, why don't you create the same thing I've done with copy? But a community like that would be really well received. And that's what I did. I, 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 you know, I was like, yeah, it made total sense to me. And of course, Chris, then there's the thing of, can I get past myself and all those things we talked about earlier about self-worth and it, am I cut out to this and imposter syndrome, right? And it, it, not to mention that I was having to quickly develop all these skills I didn't have, like understanding the tech and working with people and, and, and having to invest money uh, in ways that I had never done before and, um, you know, make sense of all that. And if I hadn't had James to guide me uh, I, I, I know I would have quit several times along the way and just given up like I did with other projects. Uh, and so um, I want to quickly tell you what James would always tell me when I'd come to him flustered and say, James, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. I think <laughs> I, I might abandon this project. He would always say, I can't do that. I wish I could do his accent. But he would say, <laughs> we celebrate the terror of creating something big because we know that once it's complete, we will have very little competition. Wow. And, yeah, and, 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 and every time he said it, my, my hair stands up on my arm when I repeat it. And because I just knew in my bones that was 100% true, <laughs> that it was, it was worth the terror I was going through, <laughs> you know? And it's been, it's been that, you know? Um, it, it, people have really tried and like ah if rogers can do it you know like i'm, I'm gonna start my own community mm -hmm. and they start the little facebook group for a few weeks or a few months and then it goes away and you know there's literally been no real competition because i i did it right and i did it slow and that's where 
uh, my approach to to having to think things through from every which direction before I do them. Yeah, it holds us up sometimes, but it's it's the reason our foundation is so strong. I think that sounds like a great mantra that we could have in a secret entrepreneurial group, and we could chant it while drinking some wine. <laughs> <laughs> What, James's quote? The terrorist? Yes, yeah, of oh, yeah, course. Sure. You know, we, we hold this cup of uh, wine or beer or something. We celebrate the terror because, I don't know. what it, I'm going to put that in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, intro, I think. That's an amazing quote. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, one more question for you, Kevin, and, and we'll wrap things up. Um, from a copy standpoint, can you see a difference in uh, like a five-figure, six-figure, and seven-figure mentality, specifically regarding copywriting? Oh, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I'd say simply the mentality is, look, when you're, when you're starting out as a freelancer, you have one job, which is prove the model that somebody will pay me for this, right? Mm -hmm. And once you've done that and now you've uh, repeated that model and you're consistently getting paid so that this is now your full-time gig, the next important thing and the scarier thing is to now become a better negotiator and see the big picture on the value you can really bring to a project. So I see a lot of freelancers get caught up in this, that part of it. It's like, well, I just want to keep getting paid, but I'm burned out and it's not scalable, right? And so the seven figure uh, trick or transition is you need to now find really good uh, people, business owners to partner with and say, here's what I think we can do together. I think your products are great. I can see where your copy is falling short. Let me take over your campaigns and let's talk about a percentage, you know, revenue share. And, you know, you get two or three of those and suddenly now you don't have to search for clients all the time and people are, it should be the happiest check they write every month because you're the one who helped create it, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, revenue shares and, and creating those kind of deals. But it requires confidence, experience, and understanding marketing far beyond just the, the words that sell the products. Where do you see Copy Chief in your career as an entrepreneur in the next 10 years? I would love it to grow uh, to the point where it's more of a, a directory. Um, again, part of the, the slow growth part, because I really care about relationships, is I've been slow to create like a directory of here are copywriters and here is a way to legitimize them. Almost like, you know, kind of like Upwork is done to a degree, right? Okay. I would like to create, I, I can see it, it one, that's an immediate opportunity that would take years to, I think, really build correctly, but have it become more, almost like the Angie's List or a better, mm -hmm. a better version of Upwork specific for copywriters. We have this amazing community of all these really smart and plugged in copywriters of all experience levels and a lot of them have more talent than experience right now and they need these opportunities and then we have all these business owners who bring all their own baggage about working with copywriters and hiring copywriters and and we've been working really hard to, with both parties uh very intimately to understand the psychology around all that and how to tactically help them through it and it's been successful but you know it, it, Obvious, just like the problem I had originally, we need to figure out a way to scale that and automate some of that at this point. And so that's what I would love Copy Chief to become. It's like if you need something written, even if it's content or sales copy, you know that the, the place to come find your next writer is Copy Chief. And there's a process that feels totally instinctive and, and gives you confidence. Um, so and plus the live events. I love our live event our next one's coming up in October and uh, it's, you know, like no other event. It, it, what's great about the live event, Chris, is that it is exactly what we do in the forum for three days in person. And nice. so last year, you know, we created these meetups and 12 copywriters left there with new contracts. That's how great the need is for these. And these business owners were thrilled to find new writers. Right. And, yeah. and uh, so if, if, 
if if 10 years from now, five years from now, we had this amazing directory and everybody was getting great results from meeting each other uh, there. Uh, and the live event was instead of, you know, 250 people, it was 2,500 people or 20,000 people. Who knows, right? Like that's mm-hmm. that's what would excite me. Where Where's your event at and what date, Kevin? Uh, it's in right here in St. Petersburg, Florida, and it's October 23rd, 4th, and 5th this year. Excellent. Kevin, I think we're going to wrap up there, man. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing all your, your tools and your tips and your tricks with us. We really appreciate it. If the listeners want to reach out and learn more about what you have going on and what you guys have going on at Copy Chief, where's the best place they could do that at? Yeah, they should just go to copychief.com. They can get the the book there for free and that'll uh, put you on the list and then you'll, you know, we won't bombard you, but you'll be in tune to what we're doing and I have a couple podcasts that I'm really proud of that are really one's very tactical called Copy Chief Radio where we take the best lessons from the community and and put them in an episode, a 20-minute episode. And one goes a little deeper, more like yours Chris called The Truth About Marketing where I I go deep like this with entrepreneurs and copywriters. Excellent, man. Kevin, again, thanks for joining us. And listeners, thank you guys for joining us. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, listeners, thanks for joining us once again. We wanted to remind you about our high-performance productivity coaching and our annual Get Shit Done live retreat in Thailand. Both are designed for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs to get a lot of work done rapidly. And whether you need some personal coaching while working away at home or a retreat in Thailand where you can get out of your normal routine and surround yourself with other successful entrepreneurs, we have those options for you. Check out all the details at thebusinessmethod.com. And we'll see you on the next podcast.